the stress of having to be in the standby with a vehicle this big. Hi, my name's Flossie, and this is my tiny home on wheels, Siren the Step Van. I cannot believe I'm yet off to the US again, crossing the border from Canada and traveling all the way down to Oregon this time. Living in a van in summer is absolutely no joke, especially in the middle of a heat wave. You have your engine to worry about, your body temperature to keep cool. I'm melting. And your living space to try and remain habitable. Finding shade, coolness, and staying hydrated, as well as trying to get on top of getting to my destination. I was really hoping the van gathering that I was heading to, the meetup, to meet friends who might also be nomadic like myself, hoping that this was gonna be worth it. Oh my gosh, I feel so much better. However, when you are semi-nomadic, making steadfast plans is sometimes not always the easiest, especially when it comes to ferry reservations. Yet again, I am at the ferry terminal, waiting to go to the US, which is exciting. I made the mistake of not booking a reservation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not booking a reservation this time, and I got one for the way home, so that feels really good, but... Oh my gosh. The stress of having to be in the standby with a vehicle this big, I do not recommend. If you know when you're traveling, which I did not, always get a reservation. It makes life so much easier. Coming to standby with a vehicle that's oversized is not a guarantee you'll get on. And so I have spent all day hovering and trying to get on every standby. This is my third time and I think I'm going to be on this ferry. It's the last sailing of the day. <sighs> oh my gosh, my nerves. I stopped to get some US dollars out. Look at this. So cool. Oh, the ferry has just got in. I'll be getting on really soon. I have been here since five o'clock this, mo this morning. Oh, I got sunburned. Ooh. It's been very hot today. I'm tired, but I managed to work, get some work done in between like, can I get on this standby ferry? Can I get on that standby ferry? And ended up just working the whole day. And now it is 7 p.m. Ferry is unloading and I will be loading on this ferry and I'm excited. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear me make it and it'll be okay. Now I just gotta figure out where I'm parking. How far am I traveling? Where am I going next? I don't know! Traveling this far is often a gamble in an older vehicle. My vehicle is a 1999 and its engine has been around the block a few times. This is the furthest I've taken the van away from Vancouver Island, a place where I feel safe, I know where I am, how to get support. I really felt like I was driving into the unknown, taking on an adventure that I was so excited about. Who knows what might happen? I'm the independent type, one who does things that other people say, oh, be careful about doing that, or I don't think you can do that. Makes me want to do it even more. I have left the Southern Hemisphere and moved to the Northern, and I love it here. This is now my new home. Traveling is something that is in my bones. However, I've learnt that building community is also important. Doing things alone, is good for a season, but having connections, making connections and meeting people, having the support resources emotionally, physically or otherwise is really important. And I believe if you meet people with things in common, interests or passions that you share, there is a point of connection, a point of growth and building each other up, learning from each other and ways of supporting. 
sometimes going to a meetup is daunting. You don't know if you'll meet any of your kin, people who you have something in common with. The overstimulation of a lot of people all at once, some of which who already know each other, and you being the new person, the outsider trying to make friends. As an adult, making connections isn't always the easiest, but I believe it is worth a try. My goal for coming to this was to make connections, meet friends, build my own community of folks who, if I do continue to travel to the US and explore, I now know people to ask questions, ask for support if I get stuck. They can share recommendations or tell me to avoid certain things at certain times. This knowledge and community sharing is so valuable that I'm willing to drive a really long way to camp and meet people I've never known before in the hopes of sharing joy and connection. It's kind of one of those life's mysterious curiosities that I'm always chasing. Good morning. I just got up. <sighs> Parked here. It's kind of an odd little spot. There's a dirt road that goes that way. On the edge of the forest. I'm still kind of in the shade, which is awesome. Look at these berries. Anyway, I need to put the Starlink up and upload this week's video before I do anything. And I want to do that before it gets too hot. So that I can stay cool inside and have breakfast and chill before I head to my next destination. There's so much life in this little spot. St. John's Wart. And right here we have pineapple weed. Otherwise, you could fondly know it as pineapple com chamomile. So I'm gonna pick some of that. And then there's fireweed. Let me just show you. Right there. And that's great for tea. And then right over here, we have dusty, but nevertheless good thimbleberries. Mm. Thimbleberries. Oh, and salmon berries. Special treasures. Blackberries out. The St. John's water is out. The fireweed is out. It's just so much abundance in forageable food. And I'm just going to go for a little wander, leave the van there. Berries with a side of dust. Delicious. Hmm. Okay, time to get this video uploaded and then I can go for a little explore. I am parked 
here, and I don't know where this goes. There's a gate, you can't drive any further. But I can walk that way and have a look. Those are huckleberries. Wow, they're huge. What a beautiful spot. I have my basket full of beautiful foraged things. There's an owl hooting at me somewhere from in these trees up here. It is a hot one today. I'm trying to spread my driving out over many hours, so I'm not doing all of it at once. Fortunately, I want to make a stop, which is an hour back north, but I think it will be worth it. I have to pick up some groceries and I'm still waiting for my video to upload now while I go for a walk. And there is so much beautiful plant life out here. I thought I would pick some. And I've been snacking on berries the whole way. Which has been so cool. I've got the very last elder flower. So all of these elder flower plants have these bright, bright red berries behind me. <sighs> Just feels like a time of abundance and after so many months of feeling worried <coughs> <coughs> feeling worried and anxious and oh, so much tension in my body it feels so nice just to be wandering around admiring and taking in the beauty of the plants so close to my little house in the middle of nowhere which is freaking lovely I am enjoying myself immensely the bird song is beautiful <sighs> Yeah, I'm happy. I am really happy. melting it is very very hot but now I have parked in the shade I'm gonna leave my fan on and hopefully by the time I come back my van will have considerably cooled down it is so nice that this is shady I have plenty of solar my van has well topped up my engine can now cool down it is too hot to be driving anywhere and I just want to chill but I'm going to go visit an old bridge Let's do that. down there is lower than the water level. Wow! That, that is lower than the water level. Wow! We have a sailboat, which I think is a draft, not a draft, what's the above water term? I don't know. The height of the mast is above 55 feet. This is my friend's step van. And look, the bridge is up. Two step vans. Two bridges. And a sailboat going through. Two sailboats going through, actually. 
That one there with the brown mast is booting it to get through. So cool. Yet another evening of driving off into the sunset. Octo says it's bedtime. Oh lordy, I am tired. I just got to uh, Forest Service Road. My sleeping spot tonight. Ideally, I want to get up early-ish and drive again while it's still cool in the morning, but I also might just want to chill here for a bit. I will decide that in the morning. But I'm just going to make sure that I'm far enough off the road. And then I'm going to fall over. <sighs> Lots of travel combined with hot and socializing and people in city. I am really tired. I don't normally spend that much time ever in cities. And I knew I would this trip and I was gearing myself up for it and excited for the socialization and friends and sweet connections that have happened which is really lovely I'm tired let's just go check that I'm far enough off the road and in bed stuck in that mud tomorrow morning all right good night good morning you would think I was still in VC taking that with us.
the top of a skull. Good morning. I thought I would fill you in. I have been traveling now for two and a half days. And this morning I actually woke up feeling alive that I've had a really good sleep. I have been really persisting and pushing through up until now to get moving. I am in Washington and I'm heading down to Oregon and I am attending an event called Camp Pride which is put on by uh, Van Life Pride which you can find on YouTube and Instagram and I'm really excited about it. I've been to one event before in Arizona and I'm excited to go to another and I'm excited to do a much longer trip solo in Washington by myself. I've come down here a couple times with my partner which has been a nice like getting used to crossing the border with my van because I don't have a Canadian passport. I have a New Zealand passport and the first time I ever crossed the border in a vehicle was via a land border and I did not have a good time. I was on a different visa then, now I'm a permanent resident in Canada and it makes a difference, I tell you. The ferry crossing via Port Angeles is amazing. It is easy and it is stress-free. All by the fact that I had to wait for a standby. So the ferry catching, a little bit stressful. Border crossing, not stressful at all. Um, and I was prepared this time. I didn't bring any fresh fruit across the border. I have my return ferry booked, so I was able to show them that I'm coming back and when I'm coming back. And it's in a week and a half time, so I'm only down here for 10 days. Um, and it's really refreshing. I'm excited to see a few people who I've met before, some internet people make new connections. I get a bit of social anxiety. I spend a lot of time by myself. I work remotely, so I work by myself online. I see my work colleagues, but I only have two work colleagues um, in my new job. And I'm a bit of an introvert. I can be really extroverted when I feel comfortable around somebody or I've met them before or to the camera when actually I'm just being introverted that to me it feels like I'm being extroverted to myself and so I get a little nervous going into meeting new people and shy but I think I have done so much what they call masking as a confident extroverted person that I kind of overcompensate for my show social anxiety by being bubbly or happy but what that generally happens to do is I end up performing a version of myself and that kind of disconnects me from being able to connect with people I, in the past when I was much younger I was a performer I was a dancer I would go to events and I would hoop or twirl fire but in all of those things you're with people but you're not actually interacting and connecting with them you are around you're being observed by people but you're actually making very little one-on-one -on -one conversation and connection and it was because that I found those things really hard and awkward to do so I'm excited to do, go to this event I am feeling a lot more confident in myself but also nervous and shy at the same time so I hope it will go well and I hope I meet and get to interact with some awesome people I'm excited to be around a bunch of queer folk who some of whom are nomads and travelers and van people also which is cool I definitely class myself as semi-nomadic because I have the blessing and gift of a home base to return back to on Vancouver Island and it is really beautiful to be down here and exploring and have the freedom and luxury of some time off and community to make new community I'm really I'm excited about that and very happy to be in my van and doing this trip and taking my van because last time I went to a van life pride gathering I rented a van and it wasn't my own and it didn't have any of the luxury and I was so cold because I didn't have enough blankets and I don't want to repeat that experience yeah it wasn't fun so this time I am warm I'm in my own space I have stuff. So I am past Seattle right now and I am heading 
Hopefully towards Portland, I've been breaking the trip up into small sections so that I'm taking care of my van and trying to travel in the cooler part of the day. So I'm about to set off. It's early-ish in the morning and I want to get traveling before it gets to the peak of the temperature today because it has been hot this weekend. Um, and then at some point I will stop somewhere and I want to go to a thrift store and I want to go to a grocery store. So I need to stock up on food beforehand. I had come down with a little bit of food, but mostly dried goods or processed refrigerated goods, like some tofu and stuff like that. And I really need fresh fruit and some snacks and some fresh vegetables. Because I don't have anything except lettuce. And lettuce ain't going to feed me for a, for a whole week. So, got to do some grocery shopping before I get there. But I'm having a lovely time, and this is the second beautiful spot that I've ended up camping at. It's been out. I've travelled out of my way to come to places like this forest to camp, and it's been really, really nice. My windshield is covered with bug carcasses from driving in the night. I think that made it worse. I need to get more wi wiper fluid because my wiper fluid is not very full. Holy moly, I am in Oregon. I'm in part of Portland. Oh my gosh, we were just in the shade for a hot second and I am melting. It is definitely time to get off the road, stop driving for the morning have some food, chill out. A little update on my fermented uh, cones, um, Doug fir cones. They are fermenting nicely and I thought I would do this on camera because I want you to see how fizzy this is and I'm like, should it, it's been very hot in the van and I should have burped this yesterday. Oh my gosh, it tastes amazing and smells awesome. Shower hoses outside. I am incredibly hot and sticky. Time to go have a shower. Right. Towel. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <sighs> oh my gosh. I feel so much better. My body is wet again. My clothes are wet. <sighs> I have been struggling in this heat and I have been trying to space my driving out in the mornings and the evenings because it is just too hot and I don't want to stress my engine and driving to about 10, 30, 11 is like the max for me and it just gets too hot. I get too hot, let alone my vehicle. So, Whew. trying to keep myself cool and the van cool has been quite a job. I am down by the Hood River, which I know it's pretty, but I'm biased. I like British Columbia rivers so much. They're just so beautiful. So I got in earlier, but it was kind of silty. 
and so I just had another shower to get all cleaned off and down by the river there's down by the river there's currently tons of people so I wasn't gonna film anything of myself getting in but here in the privacy of my own vehicle I can but I also haven't really been eating anything because it's been too hot and so I'm gonna try and feed myself something now because otherwise I'm gonna run out of energy and steam and I still have at least a couple hours of driving tonight and I definitely want to find some place cool for tomorrow because I have to work tomorrow <sighs> and I need it to be cool.